Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast today. I know you guys have been waiting for this one. I know the mixed martial arts fans, the fighting fans have been waiting for the L7C. Talking about UFC 300, we apologize, but it is here. We're going to talk some 300, 301, some Haney versus Garcia, and everything going on in the fighting world. So we got the MMA expert, Mr. Chuck Marlowe. How are you doing today, sir? I am doing fantastic, man. Coming off of 300, I am feeling great. Man, I just got to ask, man, did it live up to your expectations? It lived up to the hype. Um, the fights were great. People fought like they should have. No one really played down. No one didn't try. So it it was a great card. Uh, I think Dana White deserves a round of applause for putting this together. Um, I know a lot of people weren't too happy with the main event, but I know that main event lived up to the hype. I agree. I agree. Yeah, so I know this happened on April 13th, guys. I know it's been a couple of weeks. You probably heard everyone talking about it, but you're going to hear our opinions on it. So, Chuck, some of these bigger fights, which ones do you want to talk about first? I mean, this is that's the hard thing, though. Like, this whole card is big fights. I mean, I'll, I'll burn through some of these bottom ones quick, and we get into the bigger fights. Okay. I mean, we started so off. You want with, a submission? Yeah, we had, you had all, you just, this is crazy. Just thinking about how this went. You had Cody Garbrandt losing, starting it off, which, I mean, we all wanted the Ohio man to win, but, I mean, he's going against a former champion, mm -hmm. Figueiredo, who looked amazing. Yep. Bobby Green beat Jim. I mean, Bobby Green looked on point. Andrade won. I mean, that was no surprise there. Mm -hmm. The one surprise was Moicano beating Jalen Turner, but Jalen Turner kind of folded. He was winning at some point, and then Moicano did his thing, and he did what he does best and knocked him out. Um Lopez looked fantastic. He looked great. I mean, round one knockout. Definitely can't wait to see what more comes out of them. But we'll we'll move into some of the ones I really want to talk about. Oh my gosh, Caleb. Yeah, Harris. so I feel like the one after Lopez and Yusuf, I mean, I feel like this is one of the big three because obviously Oh, this is a big three for sure. Because everyone was talking about Miss Kayla Harrison and her debut. Obviously debuting against a former champion in Holly Holm. This was a lot of people's first time seeing her on this big card if you didn't follow like all the other stuff. And she looked really good, man. Oh, she looked more than good. She looked phenomenal. She looked locked in. She looked like someone who uh, potentially can go and fight for a belt here probably soon. I mean, she's calling for a belt immediately. Um, and I mean, damn, I mean, can you blame her? Did you see the way she just dominated? She, it, uh, this sounds bad to say, but it looked like a man just whooping on Holly Holm. The way she fights is so physical and the mm -hmm. strength she has is so raw. It's just she, the way she used her jujitsu and she just grappled the mess out of Holly Holm. And she just got her on the ground and started beating her face in. And then she got that submission. And she just sunk it in, and it was done. I mean, she looked phenomenal. Uh, you saw the response, which, I mean, we we talked about, me and Jacob. I mean, Amanda calling her out already. So I told you, if there was anyone to get Amanda Nunes out of retirement, it'd be a Kayla Harrison. And, I mean, you can see why by just that performance alone. I mean, Holly Holm is a household name. She beat people like Ronda Rousey, who thinks that she's the best in MMA of all we'll time. We'll talk about uh, her later. Yeah, <laughs> but just she looked phenomenal, and I can't wait to see more from her. I want to see her against higher level fighters than Holly Holm because I mean, let's be real, Holly Holm's getting up there, and I mean, yep. it's probably time to hang him up. Mm -hmm. But um, she looked phenomenal. A round of applause, amazing performance, and I'm very proud of what she did. And I can't wait to see more. I'm still riding the hype train, and we're gonna ride it until. We see someone who stops her. Yeah, if you look at her appearance, her physique, like the her mannerisms, all of that, she and we always talk. She could be the next one, like the next it top overall female in the company. That and she can be the one who brings in more fans. She yeah. could be that Conor McGregor, that Ronda Rousey, that Amanda Nunes. Mm -hmm. She can be that John Jones, that DC, that person that really brings people in and changes the UFC ground. I mean, 
She's not going to probably have a long run because she's up there in age and she'll probably retire like probably after five to six years, mm-hmm. five to seven years. That's my time frame I'm giving her. But I mean, she looked fantastic and I can't wait to see more. And she knows how to work a mic. I mean, get her up in the WWE. Uh, <laughs> it's the way she's over there taught working the mic. She she can do it. Uh, uh, yeah, she was really it was my first time actually seeing her fight like in person. So not like watching a clip of some of her other stuff, but like a live thing. So I was thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. Let's keep it moving. I mean, you had after that, I, we're going to go past Al Jermaine Sterling and Calvin Kayla. We're going to kind of hit that quick. I mean, Aljo, it wasn't the fans' favorite fight because, I mean, that's how Aljo fights. But, I mean, me and Jacob said it. He's going to grapple. He's going to wrestle. I mean, he looked good at adding on that weight, moving up in weight. I mean, he did better than what most people thought that people would cut or who change weight classes. He looked a lot more physical. I mean, he already looked cut as is at Bantam weight, but he looked even more cut at featherweight. And I'm proud of what he did and had a good dominant performance, won by unanimous decision. Want to see more out of him, though. We move up to the performance of the night, Jerry Prosaka and Alexander Rakic. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, Jerry, he looked great. He's back. He's uh this awkward style, man. I swear his awkward style almost gets him in trouble so many times. But I mean, if he touches you, and that's because he has an awkward style, he'll put you to sleep. And he did. He put Alexander Rockets to sleep. And uh, we'll see. He might be trying to contend for a belt here soon. Um, he's gonna have to fight the number one contender in light heavyweight, or probably I think he'll get a title shot. I don't think he's gonna have to fight Jamal Hill. Um, so can't wait to see Jerry versus Alex Perea. I mean, that's going, I don't know when that's going to happen. Alex might have his eyes on some other things, but we'll get into that later. And you can keep moving up because there's so, there's so many, there's early prelims, then prelims, then you got the main card. Yeah. I mean, you move up into Bo Nickel. I mean, one of the fan favorites one of the people that everyone looked to see i mean he didn't look as dominant as he usually does cody brundish put up a good little fight i mean it wasn't great he didn't do his best either but bo nickel definitely still showed that he's a dominant fighter i want to see more out of him i mean people don't like it because he wrestles but like me and jacob said it's not something that fans are going to want him to hold the belt because they don't like wrestling because it's not, ooh, wow, you know, a fantastic knockout. I mean, he got the submission, though. He did his thing. Um, great performance to Bo. Um, can't wait to see more out of him. We'll see if he gets to top 15 here soon. Mm-hmm. And then you keep moving up. You got Charles. Who, not you, Charles, but Charles. Opera. <laughs> he took the L um, in round three to Armin. Yeah, so he lost by split decision. Yeah. Um, not everybody was happy with that, but I mean, if you look at the um, significant strikes, you have 19 of, uh, I mean, you have what, 33 of 53 for Charles, and you have 75 of 117 for Armin, Armand, um, sorry, I can never pronounce his last name. Sorry, I'm not gonna even going to try to pronounce it. <laughs> um, but you had the two of four for takedown 50 percent and then he had eight minutes and 41 at control time i mean that's what it really comes down to charles tried i mean he was leaking Arm armand really put it on him um charles tried he got him he knocked i think he had a knockdown i can't remember but he had a lot of submission attempts from the ground and he was trying to be aggressive on his back which i mean his brazilian jiu-jitsu is amazing so i'm not surprised that he tried that but it just wasn't enough to get the job done in the end because I think Armand just put more damage out on Charles. And I mean, in in the end, when it comes to judges and when it comes to fighting, they're going to rule in favor of damage. That's just how it works. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, I really don't want to use hyperbole. I really do not. But I really think I'm trying to I'm going back. I mean, I really fully got into UFC around 2014, 15, especially when I was able to go to the B-dubs where I used to live. I used to love going to B-dubs, watching pay-per-views. I think that's the best 
I personally think that's the best environment to watch UFC pay-per-views at a B-Dubs. That's just me. I mean, you get everyone involved. You have everyone band like every it's like it's like you're almost in a mini arena. Mm-hmm. And you get everybody, everyone's locked into the fights. You get all the crowd. You get I mean, remember Jose Aldo versus oh, yeah. Yeah, we saw the B-Dubs. We saw that at B-Dubs. And like just everybody jumped out of their seat. Everyone's running around on high five and everyone it creates a sense of camaraderie and it creates a sense of just joy it just brings out a little bit of barbaric like barbaricness from everybody and it's and just, i do i do want to get back to that one day but this fight man that we're about to talk about with justin and max you only see endings like this in an anime in a movie it, it might be the best like ending fight i've ever seen watching ufc in my now almost 10 years watching i can agree to that i mean what we saw there is something we will, may never see again. I mean, a lot of the times when you get to that last little bit of a fight, a fighter who is up in the fight, who's winning, they're not going to go out there and call out the other fighter and sit there and say, let's, let's just brawl. Let's just do this for seconds, the last 10 seconds. In the middle, last round. Like, they're not going to do that. They're going to take their win. They're going to kind of play it safe, just play defensive and try not to get hit. And I mean, this is this is what you love about Max Holloway, because this isn't the first time we've seen this out of Max Holloway. Mm -hmm. And this is why he's fighting for the baddest motherfucker ever. This is why he was fighting for the BMF, because that is a bad motherfucker right there. And he was the underdog in the fight. And and like I said, he definitely did not deserve to be an underdog. I mean, if anyone ever watches Max Holloway fight, it's the best boxing in UFC of all time i'm giving it to him he's of all time 181 of 309 significant strikes and compared to 103 of 199 i mean there's good percentage for both of them to be honest but max put it on him and i mean that's something we we i sh- we, we shouldn't be surprised by it was a great fight this is this was a fight that brings in more fame oh yeah this is one of those fights that People are just like, wow, this is this is UFC. I want to watch more. Two dudes who are really good at their craft. Final 10 seconds. Max says, you, me, in the middle. And I'll come to the middle. Justin didn't have to oblige. He could have just stayed back, and he probably would have won on points. But he said, no, I'm a BMF, too. And then those final 10 seconds, no blocking, just straight hands. Either person could have got caught. Unfortunately for Gaethje, he was the one who got caught. Like, no one's going to risk getting caught, especially against Justin fucking Gaethje. I mean, the man touches you. You can go out. So it's just by both people. I mean, fight of the night, performance of the night. That's $600,000 in bonuses right there for each fighter. Yeah, I just, I couldn't believe what I saw when I saw that. And in a buzz, it was literally a buzzer beating knockout with one second left. It was amazing. I mean, I I hope we get something like that again in our lifetime, but I, who knows? The bad thing, obviously, because it wasn't as dramatic, the thing I saw in the main event was some BMF stuff, too. But we'll get to, we'll get to Alex, too. But then you had, I mean, we had no surprise. We saying we, there was no. Yeah, I mean, 256 of 327 total significant strikes. Six and nine on takedowns, 12 minutes and 44 seconds of control time. Utter dominance. I mean, what do you expect from Zhang? I mean, you can't be surprised. I mean, she is, she is elite. She's one of those fighters, I think, that will eventually... Her style's not too like great to everybody because sometimes she can be a little bit too loose. But I think she will be one of those female fighters also where you put her up there in those tiers. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, when I'm starting to think about building my Mount Rushmore later on in life. She's up. She's going to be up there, I think, in my opinion. Then you got the main event, Alex versus um, Hill. And if it wasn't for Gaethje and um, Max, I mean, Alex... I- he he did something that I don't again this card was just crazy because Hill hit him low blow. Ref was coming in, and Alex said, No, don't stop it. I got it. 
Next couple hits, knocked him out. That if that ain't a champion, I don't know what is. I mean, most fighters, you get kicked in the nuts. You're gonna take a second and you're going, hey, mm-hmm. I gotta hey ref, I'm gonna take a breather real quick. Cup check, you know, I'm let me get a breather. I can't knock my wind out, maybe. I'm like, ha, ah, this hurts, you know? Like they're gonna take a step back and they're like, I'm gonna take this time and I'm gonna utilize it real quick and reevaluate. Alex said no. Okay. All right. He said, step back, Herb. I got this. You want you want to kick me in my nuts? I got something for your ass. Boom. Left hook. Like all and it's it's just knocked him out. It's wild to me that no one sees this left hook coming ever. Because the way he fights with his hands down so low, a lot of times when fighters fight with their hands down low, it's harder to telegraph where their punches are going to go or where they're going to come from. And he just threw that left hook up and he just slept Jamal. Jamal did all that talking, all the hype building before the fight, and it just backfired and it bit him in the ass in the end. But I want to also give props to Jamal Mm. because he's turning around on six weeks. He will be fighting. I think uh, I want to say UFC 301. He's going to be on that card. We'll highlight that a little bit. No, not 301. 302. I was going to say 301 is this Saturday. Yeah, 302. He's going to be fighting on 302 or one of those fights. I can't remember what fight card, but he's turning it around really quick. I mean, no, it's the June 29th. I'm sorry. Let me get it correct. Yeah, he'll be the co-main on that Connor card. Which, but shoot, speaking of three hundred one, that's this Saturday in Brazil. Alex wants to fight there. Obviously, they're not going to let him, but he wanted to fight in his home country. I mean, I would want to fight in my home country. I would want. I mean, you got to think Alex can cut weight like it ain't nothing, and he can put that weight back on like it ain't nothing either. And I mean, there's talks about him moving up too and trying to be a three weight belt holder. Like, I mean, he's not going to hold belts in three weights at once but he wants to have three belts in different weight three different weight classes and i mean i think he can do it he could put the weight on i mean he weighed in at 205 on friday and then was back to 2032 that same damn night so the dude can cut and put on weight like no other so i he is scary good and i mean he didn't really get much damage from jamal so it doesn't surprise me that he wants to turn around that quick he was ready and he's already training and constantly in the gym. So I love fighters like him who stay active and stay in shape and stay ready to go at any time. Shog, what would you Jamal. rate UFC 300 out of 10? Out of 10? Yeah. 9.45. Okay. There's no perfect card. Yeah. There's no such thing as a perfect card, but damn near this. This is damn near it. I mean, if you give Charles Oliveira a win and a few more knockouts in there, I say this would be to 10. I think the only thing that's really hurting me right now is Charles Oliveira losing because I always want Charles to win. I got you. I got you. So now, fast forward to we're recording on the second. This pay per view, UFC 301, is coming on the fourth. So by the time you listen to this, we'll know the results. How does two o? I mean, how does three o one follow up? I mean, three o one doesn't have the big names that three hundred have, but I mean, you got a lot of Brazilian fighters. I mean, every single fight has a Brazilian fighter. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Yep, you are one hundred percent right. I'm going to play. I'm going to tell you guys right now. I'm play, I'm making a parlay. And it's going to be just like the Canada card. I'm p- picking oh. every Brazilian to win. I'm going to s- also do separate parlays for the prelims, the early prelims, and the main card. I'm going to do it all separate, and then I'm going to put them all together. And I know that being in Brazil, these fighters are going to put on a show. I think they're going to fight for their home country. And I can't wait to see what happens because... I mean, you got some good names on here. You also have some. You got Jose Aldo. Names. That's a Brazilian legend. Oh, I mean, I, he's going to get a booming pop. The pop that he's going to get is going to be like no other. I mean, Pantoja is a champion. He's going to get a pop. But Jose Aldo is a UFC Hall of Famer. He will be a UFC Hall mm-hmm. of Famer. 
and that crowd, it will go nuts for him. I feel bad because John, Jonathan Martinez is going to get booed out the stadium. Win or lose, he is getting booed out, the, especially if he wins. So you might want to take one for the team and let Jose beat your ass. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be interesting because I, I think I'm more excited to see Jose out because I feel like that's what the promotion's been building. Like the commercials I'm seeing for 301 has been more about him fighting. But I don't know. I, I just feel like there'll be some knockouts we don't expect, and there's going to be some crazy stuff. Like, that's just how UFC is. Oh, and one fighter that I want to highlight, one fighter we're going to see some crazy stuff from, Michael Perea. Mm-hmm. That man right there, backflips, jumping off the cage. Like, you're going to see something nuts from him. I think he puts a, he has a knockout of the night. I mean, Ehor is no, like, no slouch. But I think Michael Perea tries to put on a, a show for that Brazilian crowd because, I mean, every time he goes in that octagon, he puts on a show. But I think he's really trying to do something crazy in um, 301. So going back to this 300, too, because at the end of all the thing, and in this way, that's how he announced it, Dana White was passed a piece of paper. <laughs> and then he made announcements for these next couple things. And obviously one of them was an official um, one of Conor McGregor's next match. He made it official. They, you saw that paper. They tried to make it so clean. I mean, let's be real. That is probably one of the most badass ways to announce a fighter coming back. Mm-hmm. Slip a paper in the middle of a press conference, like going, oh, uh, you know, it's just, it's classic Dana White. Really trying to build up the storyline there. It's been fucking years in the fucking works. About damn time, Connor. Finally out of that, uh, Finally got the roids out of system. So, I mean, he should be able to drug pass a drug test now. I mean, yeah, maybe I, I cocaine, don't expect just... any. I don't expect anything from him. It's just it's, I just expect the spectacle. The usual Conor McGregor antics, the showmanship, the shit talking, the mind games. It's all going to be there. It's already been there. I mean. You do what you're told, you know, like it's going to be it's going to be Connor just shit talking Michael Chandler the whole time. And I just cannot wait until we get to that card. I mean, it's he he also announced Dustin and Islam. I mean, like, yeah, that's at the pay-per-view before that's at 302. That's Um, that's on June 1st and then 303. So they got two big ones, June 29th. And like you said, that's the one where Jamal Hill is um, fighting. He's fighting on uh, 303. So obviously with Connor and Paul, you'll definitely hear from us talking, previewing, and reviewing that pay-per-view. No ranking next to his name at all either. And it's the main event? No ranking. No ranking, and he's main event. Mm -hmm. Comes back, main event. Mm -hmm. No title shot, but main event. Oh. But here's here's something I want to propose to you, Martin. Mm-hmm. I, I I've talked to some friends, and I also been kind of picking people's brain. If Conor loses, do you think they should make Conor McGregor versus Tony Ferguson finally? If he loses, yes. I mean that's a fight that people have been wanting for decades now, and they never kind of they never the stars never align. Two older fighters kind of at the end of their contracts. Uh, well, Tony, I mean, I think he would come back to do a fight against Connor for sure. And I think that Connor will be willing to, for his last fight in his contract because I think what he had like two fights left in his contract mm-hmm. to finally do something that everybody wanted to see. And I mean, they're both kind of, if, if Connor loses, they're both washed probably. We'll see how he fights. I got to see how he performs. If he fights good and he looks electric, I just, I wonder if that's something you think that they would finally make happen. So on the flip side, so I'm fine with that. If he loses, that's cool. But if Connor wins, who would you then want him to fight? You got to give him the number one contender. So, I mean, you got to go to that welterweight division. You got to put him against maybe a Kamara Usman. Oh, God. Or give him Shavkat. That's someone I haven't seen. Kamar Usman, that, that would be interesting. I mean, you got to put him at least against one of those top three fighters. I mean, people are going to bitch and complain if you give him an immediate title shot right after. Oh, I yeah. mean, 
Oh, yeah. Because they were going to bitch and complain regardless. But I think you have to give him somebody that he, someone in that top three at least. And if he looks good, then, then you give him Leon Edwards. We'll see. That's ways away. That is ways. That's, well, yeah, that's, not even ways. It's a month away. So we'll be back talking about that. It'll be very, very interesting. But Chuck, in the boxing world, the things that we missed too, we had a mega fight with Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia. I mean, I was very vocal with the lead up saying Ryan Garcia stands a zero chance because it looked like he wasn't taking it serious. He just looked so goofy, all that. You get to the fight. I was completely wrong. Right. I've never seen Haney. Like Haney got knocked down three times. Haney should have been knocked down in the first round, but the ref was saving him. And he did. I tried, I tried to tell people, like, Ryan got knockout power. I, I Everyone's got a puncher's chance, and I, I, I'm, pissed the, I'm pissed off that damn ref fucking sucks. I had Ryan Garcia by knockout plus 750. I got a little greedy instead of just taking the plus 650 money line. And that ref kept saving Haney. I mean, <sighs> money aside, I mean, Ryan, his hand speed, it, he looked good. I mean, Haney looked shook. And I want to see what else is next for Ryan Garcia. I think, well, you saw he put $2 million on himself and won $12 million also. Yeah, and he, he was... He was on skeptical. top of the world, man, and then he just got popped for PEDs. Yes, he did. I can't. It starts with the O, or, or it's something. I can't remember what it was called mm-hmm. off the top of my head. Um, he said he took Ash, ashwagandha, which I mean, I don't think that's going to make you pop positive for it. But I mean, it's found in um, different supplements. I can't remember exactly what it's found in, but I mean, it doesn't really affect your performance. It's not like a steroid or anything too wild or crazy. But it's still a PED at the end of the day. It's after the fight, after the fact. I mean, you would wonder why it just now pops up, um, which is kind of weird. Um, I don't know how they're going to handle that. Don't know if they're going to make him relinquish the belt. But, um, yeah, Ryan Garcia, it looks like his antics are over with. I don't know. I haven't seen him do anything crazy since winning. Well, his antics Probably. cost him the belt because he came in overweight, overweight, so he didn't get a chance. To, he would have won the belt. And he had to pay $500,000 per each pound he was over to Devin Haney, which he did. He honored $1.5 million, but, I mean, look at his purse after the fact. Mm-hmm. Man took home a lot of dinero, and uh, I am... I am still not surprised, but at the same time, I'm surprised. I'll see what's next for him. I don't know who wants to fight him next. I think he's calling out Sean O'Malley and Terrence Crawford. I mean, Terrence Crawford will tear that man apart. He gets that's killed. A, Ter- yeah, that's that's, that's, that's a man that don't that. play. He don't play games. He's not. Yeah, if you just saw what he just did to spend, yeah, you do not want that. Yeah, he's not going to play no games with him. He's going to take him serious the whole way through and not think that he's taking the fight. He will think that he's taking the fight serious, even if he's not. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. I agree. No, it's interesting. Then you go to this is still months away, but you know you got another spectacle match coming in July with uh Tyson and Paul. Chuck, I don't under they made this officially sanctioned, so now it's gonna count for professional records, which I don't like at all. I don't either because don't paint Mike Tyson's record, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, Mike Tyson's old as shit. So, like, just like how, he's been out of boxing for who knows how long. I mean, yeah, he had that fight with, I um, can't remember who. It was, like, maybe a couple or three yeah, years Yeah, he had back. that. I think he had that. He had the charity fight. Yeah, and it's not like it was anything crazy. It was a charity fight. They weren't going. I mean, they were going a little bit all out. They were trying to knock each other out, but it wasn't nothing crazy. I mean, he hasn't been at a. Mike Tyson professional heavyweight boxing level in years. So to make that like a sanctioned fight, it's just kind of beyond me. I hope Mike Tyson knocks this motherfucker out because I'm tired of this man. Uh, it's, Paul. it's just not going to happen, bro. He, it's Paul always money. stacks it's the scripted. deck. It's scripted. I don't know. I feel like it's scripted at this point. If he, if he, if, 
Mike Tyson loser, I'm kind of feeling like it's scripted. Just I know he's old and I know he's kind of people think he's washed. I, I still feel like he's still Mike Tyson. He could uppercut him and put him out. I mean, I he's don't know. That, he's getting that last big payday, man. But the money line, if you see it opening, he's like plus 150 mm-hmm. until, compared to like a minus, what, 110, 150 or something like that. So, I mean, it, they, they're thinking it's going to be close, but I just. I oh, that know. exhibition was against Roy Jones uh, Jr. in yeah. 2020. Yeah, so four years ago. I mean, and then before that was probably decades. Like, it's uh, it's beyond me. It's a, well, literally an exactly a 30-year age difference, and Tyson's actually about to turn 58 soon. Like, he could be his daddy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 30-year age difference? Like, it's beyond me. I don't know what's going to happen there. I really, really hope Mike Tyson wins to save, just put the world in order. Let's give us some order to this boxing community and really just. And then finally, so if he wins, give some, give Jake Paul somebody that can really like give him someone who can actually fight, please. Well, we can't give Jake Paul anybody because he picks who he's fighting. It's just the like cop out way, in my opinion. It's the cop out way. And I, I don't respect it. I won't respect him until he fights like, like a Terrence Crawford. He or, shouldn't even be fighting that. He should be fighting those boxers who are starving to get up to the top. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you don't give them a star right away. But if you did, I was just one. I want them to get a star just so they can see the difference level of that this man will get destroyed. I want him to look like Francis Ngannou did against Anthony, Anthony Joshua. Jo- oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I'm mad that he looked like that against Anthony Joshua. But, I mean, that's just a skill level on boxing. And that's just... Well, you saw Joshua. He was he, he wasn't like all oh, happy, happy like Tyson Fury. Joshua was playing zero games. Oh no, he was he was coming after him, and he wanted to show people that there's levels to this box and stuff, and mm-hmm. that you can't just walk in here and get gifted these things. And I'm sorry for saying your name like that, Francis Gatto, and bringing you up, especially in your time right now. Rest in lost. peace, rest in peace, to your son. Yep. Yes, rest in peace, Kobe. Uh, Hope he's okay. I hope that there's someone there for him because the way his tweets and everything have been lately, it's really got me worried for him. And I know if you lose, like, I can't even imagine that loss having two girls myself. Like, hope he's good mentally. I hope he's getting the help he needs. And he, I hope he has a lot of family and loved ones around him. I know that the country of Africa is definitely standing with him and behind him. His family is behind him. And I know mm-hmm. all the UFC and fighting community is behind him. And I hope that he's okay. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. But we'll see how that that goes. Other thing, Chuck, that's been big in the fighting thing. I mean, one of the biggest stars of all time in UFC, Ronda Rousey. Uh, just going on interviews and saying she's the greatest ever and not taking accountability for her losses and saying everyone hates her. And I, I just don't know where all this was coming from. but. Not take accountability for your losses. That's that's the one that's been irritating me. Like, you're a fighter, you're a competitor. You know, you either win or you lose. Losing sucks, but take your loss. Like an adult, say, hey, the better woman won that night, and keep it moving. Because she's been annoying people now. She is turning into the Antonio Brown of the fight world right now. I mean, Ryan Garcia was kind of up there, mm-hmm. but she's starting to take over into CTESPN. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know who said it in the group chat. I think it was Justin. <laughs> Shout yeah, out, Justin. She, she uh, driving me crazy. She, she's, I don't know. Can't even throw a promo for a fucking, or to save her life in WWE. So she should just stop talking. I mean, <laughs> no mic skills, no fight skills. I mean, it's, we know how the fight game works. You're on, either you're on top of your game or you're not. You either make a mistake and you lose. Or you are on top of your game and you're fighting perfect and you win. I mean, it's simple as night and day. If you make a mistake, it's on you. It's on you if you make a mistake and mm-hmm. lose. So you got to stop blaming all these different excuses and just own up to the fact that you lost. There's people that are going to be better than you. And I mean, if you're unless you're an undefeated fighter, then there's people that's going to be better than you. I mean, you got to look at Alex Perea. He's beat Israel out of sign like four, five, four times. And I mean, he, is he beat him once? 
He made a mistake. It is even one. But he, as long as he owns up to the fact that he lost, it's, he made a mistake. He was a better fighter on that day. There's going to be people that are better than you on that day because they're on their game. Yeah. And Ronda, you're just not that person, you know? I agree. Uh, you brought up the undefeated thing. That's actually a good thing. I wanted to ask you this. So, because everyone was like, in boxing now, and I think Floyd Mayweather ruined the fact that everyone thinks they have to be undefeated to end their career. Like UFC, like you just talked about, you can lose five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve times, and you're still fighting. You're a top draw. You're a legend. Now in this new post Floyd era in boxing, everyone tries to duck competition because they want to keep that zero as quickly as long as they can. I hate it. I mean, let's be competitive. I just, I don't know. Hey, yeah, like. There's something about competition that brings out the best in people. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you really want to be called the best fighter in the world, the best boxer in the world, you have to fight the best. And that's how you really get to test your best one. That's how people get to really see if you're the best. If you're just fighting scrubs and some people who are running in the middle of the water and maybe contend a, a few times, you're not fighting the elite competition that you're destined to fight. You're not really testing your vessel. I mean, you look at it, and I look at it in the anime since you want to test your vessel. You want to see how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. I want to see if you can beat the best of the best, the elite ability. If you have a blemish on your record, so be it. Either fight that person again or work your way back up to where you can get to that level to fight that person again. Mm -hmm. I just hate when people duck competition because it just, the money that you could make probably from fighting those other top level fighters and just the draw that it could have for everyone. Like, it's just, it kind of short. It's selling the people short. And it's not giving the people the best content that we can have in the fight community. Agreed. Agreed. Chuck, anything else, man? We went over a whole bunch of different cards and fights upcoming and caught people up to speed if they've been at a oh, this is some fight news. I just thought of something. Uh, Saw a tweet earlier today from the man himself, John Bones oh. Jones. Oh. And he's asking the community, and I'm going to ask this to all the L7C listeners around the world. Mm -hmm. Tom Aspinall or Alex Perea? He for wants to, to know who for him to fight? the people want him to fight next. And oh. he posed the, the question to the community. Um, I think most people want him to fight Tom Aspinall because Tom Aspinall is kind of do the fight. And everyone's tired of kind of Alex getting handed everything just because they think that this one with Tom has been building up. But I just want to know everyone's opinion on that. I mean, Alex is eventually going to come up to heavyweight. I feel like I, I think it's going it's kind of determined that he will at some point. But he... He's feeling good. He's feeling like he's starting to recover. He's recovering and he's back in the gym. He's working out and he's ready to see who everybody wants him to fight next. He's so where would he start. fight Alex at? Like, is he going to go down and wait? I think Alex goes up because I mean, John still got has that belt. So, wow. I think that that's where you get that three level. He wants to get that three level uh, weight class belt. So, I don't know. I it's gonna be it's gonna be something. That's 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 a way to end it. John Jones tweeting out. Let's find out. But with that being said, thank you everyone for listening to the L Seven C podcast. Again, we apologize that this review is coming out so late. That's why we had to hit a whole bunch of different things. The month of June, weeks away as we are starting the month of May, we'll definitely talk about. 202, 203. We'll definitely preview those. Uh, we'll talk about um two. I keep saying twos like we're back. We're in the threes. <laughs> 302 and 303. And we'll talk about 301 as well. So you might see there might be a lot of UFC podcasts coming from end of May, June, early July. So be on the lookout for those things. But with that being said, L7C podcast signing out. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.